Since publishing part 10 of my series on how to fly the A320, I have received a number of very nice comments about the videos that I have produced. It's rather nice to know that somebody out there is actually watching what I have produced. Let me say that I just get great excitement from using FSX. I find it a fascinating program and it has been quite a learning curve to get the better of this particular aircraft. Now I have no technical background in aircraft or piloting and the information that I give here is purely from an entertainment point of view. The speeds and flap settings etc etc have been gained simply by reading and trying and investigating the aircraft myself. I cannot vouch for the correctness of what I am doing here. But hopefully it will enable anybody who watches my series to be able to fly this incredibly detailed aircraft. Now one person in particular has asked me if I could recreate a flight that he was having particular problems with. So this video is a flight from Salt Lake City in Utah to Jackson Hole in Wyoming and it is in particular for one of my viewers, Frank. This flight will be undertaken with the default FSX scenery for this area of the world. Okay, I am now in FSX Flight Planner and I have created a route from KSLC, Salt Lake City, to KJAC, Jackson Hole in Wyoming. So we're going to fly from Salt Lake City in Utah to Jackson Hole in Wyoming. I have created the flight with three waypoints. If I alter the scale of the map for the moment, then I am going to leave Salt Lake City and fly north to HIF, which is the waypoint at Ogden. From Ogden, we shall fly northeast to BPI, which is Big Pinny. That is in the mountains. From Big Pinny, BPI, I have decided to fly north to DNW, Denoir, and then make a left turn into Jackson Hole Airport. Now, when I first tried to create this route, the FSX flight planner wanted to take me on a more direct route, and it took me into Jackson Hole at the southern end of the airport. However, looking at the details of the airport, it only has one ILS runway, and that is on runway 19. And that runway is heading 190 degrees south. And therefore, I decided to put the waypoint DNW in so that the aircraft will fly past the airport and then make a left turn to intercept the ILS along the green line that you can see just north of the airport. So my final approach to the airport will be to head north to DNW, make a left turn coming just south of the lake and picking up the ILS for runway 19 into Jackson Hole. If I now zoom in on the airport and I click the airport, it is important to note that the altitude of the airport or the elevation is 6,451 feet above sea level. So I will be landing at high altitude, relatively high altitude, over 6,000 feet. 
If I now zoom in on the map and I look at my departure airport, Salt Lake City, and I look at the airport information, the airport at Salt Lake City is at 4,227 feet elevation. So I'm actually departing from and arriving at two fairly high elevation airports. If I now return to my arrival airport and I click on Jackson Hole and I look at the airport information, you will note that it has only one ILS runway. It has runway 19, a length of 1920 feet, which is not particularly long, and it has an ILS frequency of 109.10 and a heading of 186. The flight planner has also suggested a height of 15,000 feet as my cruise altitude. For simplicity on this little flight I'm going to leave that as it is. Though as you will see later we will be flying in mountainous terrain and if you make a flight of this in the future you might want to alter that altitude. I now need to enter this flight plan into the FMC on the A320. KSLC to HIF to BPI to DNW to KJAC. OK, let's start by programming our FMC. Select init, initialization, and put our from and to airports. KSLC, KSL. C to KJAC K J A C C K S L C to K J A C Enter that back to the initialization page, put a flight number in, it's not critical that we do that, but we'll call this one 002, enter that, a cost index once again, we'll use 40 as our cost index figure, and a cruise flight level and temperature. We've been told that it's going to be 15,000 feet and I don't know the temperature but if I looked at the weather charts depending on the weather that I'd set or selected I would get an accurate one here but as it's high altitude and summertime I'd assume it's 25 degrees. Into that. I now need to go to the flight plan and I need to select my departure airport, KSLC, and select my departing runway. Now I'm going to make an assumption here. If I scroll up or down here, I can see all the available runways. I'm going to select 34 right, runway 34 right. I am just personally selecting that because that will head me north in the general direction of where I wish to go. There are now some star, sorry, SIDs, standard instrument departures available. I'm not going to use any of those. I'm only going to fly directly to my first VOR. So I'm simply going to insert 34R. Insert. I now need to get to my destination airport, which is KJAC and I need to select my arrival. 
Now it yeah, only has one ILS runway, which is ILS 19. Select that and insert. I now have a basic route from KSLC to KJAC, but I need to insert my waypoints. The first waypoint I'm going to use is HIF, H-I-F, and I'm going to insert that where it says flight plan discontinuity. The next one I want is BPI, B, B, I, and I scroll down until I see the flight plan discontinuity game and insert it there. The next one I want is DNW, D, N, W, look for the flight plan discontinuity and enter it there. Now if I scroll up or down through my flight plan, I will see the various data that has now been calculated by the FMC. I now need to find the flight plan discontinuity once again, but I need to clear that discontinuity now to make this a complete flight. Clear, enter it on the flight plan discontinuity. I should now have a complete flight plan. So I'm leaving KSLC through some waypoints that the flight uh, the FMC has calculated to HIF. Then speed limit, top of climb, BPI. DNW, top of descent, you see all these various bits of information have been added automatically by the FMC. We will look at some of these data figures later in the flight. I now need to enter some performance details once again. Click performance. I do not at the moment have V1, VR or V2 calculated. I need to enter flaps. I'm going to decide once again flaps 2. Enter that. I've immediately now got my V1 speed 125, VR 134, V2 135. I've also got flap retraction 138, 175 and clean at 190. If you remember now, we go to phase. This is the next phase will be climb, cruise, descent, and approach. Now, let's go to approach. I have to put air pressure and temperature. Again, I could look at the charts or obtain that information just prior to landing. But for simplicity at the moment, I'm going to put it as 1013, which is standard air pressure. And I'm going to put a temperature of 20 degrees once again, just for simplicity. Now let's scroll backwards through those phases to take off. You'll see here <coughs> this figure has now changed to 18,000 feet underneath the trans altitude. We are now in the United States and their trans altitude is different to that of Europe which I did in the earlier video which was 6,000 feet. This is 18,000 feet. Standard air pressure you should be set once you are above 18,000 feet. This will not apply to us on this particular flight because we're only climbing to 50, but we are using standard air pressure anyway. If I scroll once again through the phases, when I get to the final approach, I need a trans out figure here again. I'm going to put that in again at 18,000 feet because we are still in the United States. 
and that now should be our complete flight plan entered into the FMC. Now looking at my main instrument here, I should now see the beginnings of my route plan. I have set this switch to plan, remember I can select different views here, so I've set it to plan, and the range is presently set for 40 miles, so I can see 40 miles ahead of me. If I switch that to 80, 160, 320, I will now see my complete route. So I'm heading north, right to northeast, slightly left to north, and then around into my final airport. So this flight plan now looks like the original plan on the FSX flight plan. Now before we undertake the takeoff, we will see that we have the aircraft located here at Salt Lake City. Once I have cleared the runway, it will pick up this green line and head toward HIF. Coincidentally, it is calculated that at HIF, I should be at the top of my club. So I should be around 15,000 feet at or near this point. For simplicity, I have now moved the aircraft onto runway 34, ready for takeoff. So I am about to head approximately 340 degrees north on my route to Wyoming. Initial settings into the autopilot need to be changed. The 7,000 needs to be up to 15,000. It needs to be left clicked so that it is active on the FMC when the autopilot is selected. The heading needs to be left clicked and the speed needs to be left clicked so that all those will be active once the autopilot is switched on. We need flaps 2, because that is the setting that I put into the FMC program. On runway 3, 4, 9. Flaps 2 have now been set. And I am ready for takeoff. Advanced throttles allow them to stabilize. Click into the climb position. Release the brakes. Watch my speeds. Eighty knots. Increase throttle to maximum for takeoff at high altitude. My speed here, rotate.
now under FMC and autopilot control. Passing through the clouds and over the southern edge of the Great Salt Lake. Now in a climb to our first waypoint, HIF Ogden. Okay, HIF is 12.4 miles away. Aircraft is now flying at 250 knots. It's just past 10,000 feet so it will accelerate past the 250 knot point. Its next calculated speed is about 275. It is attempting to reach 15,000 feet by this arrow here. I am now at 13,000 feet. I am 6.5 miles from HIF and I am reaching my top of climb point 13,800 when it reaches 15,000 this arrow will disappear 14,2 it's now automatically throttling back so that it will settle at 15,000 feet at its cruise speed of 270 knots. The next thing that will happen, 2.5 miles, is that it will turn right and head to my next waypoint which is BPR. It's just beginning to turn now. Now turning right towards BPR. And I'm passing over Ogden. On a personal note, we have some friends who live in Ogden. Somewhere down there. Is our friend's house. Now for the next portion of the flight the aircraft will simply head towards BPI and maintain 15,000 feet. As we approach that point I will come back to the video. So we are now cruising at 15,000 feet heading towards BPI and we have about 105 miles to go. We're now 80 miles from BPI. just automatically flipped out and folded open. I think it does this at a certain altitude or time after takeoff and as we descend and make our final approach this will automatically close up again. We have now 50 miles to go and if we look at our main display whilst we're cruising let's see what else it tells us. We are travelling at 270 knots indicated airspeed. Our true airspeed is actually 331. The difference is accounted for by things like headwind, etc., 
which can either increase or decrease our indicated airspeed. Although our true airspeed is 331, we're actually travelling over the ground at a speed of 347. feet and we are on our leg towards DNW. Let's look at what is going to happen when we get to the top of descent. At the top of descent point I will still be at 15,000 feet. I will still be at 15,000 feet when I reach DNW. Then it will start to decelerate it will come through 14,000 feet, 11,000 feet, 9,007, 6,450 and it needs to be at 6,450 because that is the altitude of Jackson Hole Airport. In order to pick up the ILS for KJAC, I need to be two and a half to three thousand feet above that airport landing altitude to intercept the glide stop. That's going to be at about 9,700 feet. That's 3,300 feet above my landing altitude. So I'm going to choose an altitude slightly lower than that going to select an altitude of 9,000 feet. That is only 2,500 feet. 
zones. I'm going to select an altitude somewhere between these two. And I'm going to dial that in to the autopilot before I reach my top of descent. So that is going to be 9,000 feet. Okay, here is DNW, 56 miles away. When I reach that point, I need to start my descent. As I descend, I will make a left turn to pick up this ILS. I am going to dial in 9,000 feet, but I am not going to make it active until I reach this top of descent point. So we'll enjoy the cruise for a while, and as I get closer to this point, I'll come back to the video. I mentioned a little earlier about our cruising altitude being suggested at 15,000 feet. You can see at this point we are shortly going to cross some ridges in the mountains. Without a correct map in front of me, I do not know the altitude of those mountain ridges. It looks at this point as though technically we are actually quite low and very close to them. So for a more accurate flight, perhaps we should have selected a higher altitude to in order to safely cross these mountain ridges. But for this demonstration, I know that we will cross them because I tried to test flight before I set up this video. We do look a little close to these ridges at this point, don't we? Again, as I say, this may not be a technically correct flight. It just shows how the system operates. Okay, I have now 26 miles to go to DNW. And also my deceleration and top of descent. I decided that I was going to put in 9,000 feet. So I'm now going to dial using the scroll wheel 9,000 feet. Nothing will happen because I have not pushed this button in to make the little yellow dot show and inform me that I am actively connected to the FMC. This is just a pre-dial of 9,000 feet. <coughs> I get approximately 8 to 10 miles from this top of descent point. I will left click the button here and that will make this altitude active. The throttles will then automatically decrease and when we reach that point we will begin to make our descent onto our final approach. We now have a glimpse of the lake which is just to the north of Jackson Hole. Our flight path is going to descend, turn, past the lake and arrive at Jackson Hall, which is somewhere over here, slightly below the aircraft and to the left. Okay, I am now 10 miles from DNW and my top of descent. I'm now going to left click the control knob below my altitude. Left click now. I have a yellow dot that is now being controlled by the FMC. You heard the throttles immediately reduce and I am now descending. Looking at my instruments here, 
four miles from BMW, descending now to 14,000 feet. I have an indicator here showing me that I am descending at 1,000 feet per minute. And I have an ILS warning here telling me that it is time to select my ILS approach so that I can see my guidance system. The aircraft is now descending and making its turn to pick up the ILS approach just to the south of the lake. I am now going to select LS and turn the control knob to LS. I can now see my ILS bars. I am descending through 12,800 feet. If I return to a different field, a different range, you can see that the aircraft is now following its automatically plotted route towards the runway. So it's going to continue a little bit further now and make a left turn, which should line me up with the runway. It is back to LS. I now have an active glide slope indicator, and I have an active ILS indicator. By active, I mean they have to come up the bridge. I need now to select localizer and pick up the ILS. Right now, localizer. And eventually, I will then select approach so that I pick up both of them. If I look back at my map, I'm just about to make a final turn to the left. At that point, the ILS bars should come together. I'm now going to select localizer so that it is ready to intercept. It's now turning and it's going to try and pick up the ILS bars. Once I have done that, and I know that this is also the glide slope is also towards the center. I will select approach, gear down, watch my flaps and speed as I descend. ILS is now active and moving. Glide slope is active and moving. Okay, now select approach. Autopilot will now track both of these. I am descending to this indicated airspeed of around 190. I need to watch my flaps and speed as I descend. I am now online, ILS on glide slope and localizer, gear down. Because of the light cloud about, I cannot see the runway. I am dependent entirely on my instruments. I am now at 190 knots, flaps 1. I should see a flap setting here, but I am not fully clear at the moment as to why, when or how that indicator is shown. I think it should be a little blue dot. Failing that, it's flaps by experience of speed. Come to think about it, I didn't set full flaps for landing when I set up the FMC. Because I didn't put that in, it may not calculate automatically my flaps settings. Flaps 2. I'm now at 180. 170 knots. I'm going to select full auto brakes. 
because the runway is quite short running. As soon as I applied the brakes manually after touchdown, when I'm down to about 60 knots, the auto brakes will automatically be switched off. Now there is a lot going on for landing, as you now know, so I need to concentrate. I still cannot see the runway, I'm in cloud, but I am on centre, and I am on the centre line of the glide scope. I'm monitoring my speed, which is now just under 140, we're going to put flaps 3. When I touch down, I am going to need reverse thrust. The spoilers should deploy automatically because they are set to R. Now on our final descent, very close to the runway, passing through 8,000 feet. We still cannot see the runway. This is when you have to rely on your instruments and be confident that you are reading them accurately. As I make the final approach, the autopilot will call out my altitudes and tell me when to retard the throttles. Once I've touched down, reverse thrust. Brakes as necessary once I have reduced speed sufficiently. There are a couple of aircraft here that the computer is showing. This is the artificial aircraft that are generated. One I have one here. I'm going to ignore this at the moment for the demonstration. Of course, because of that, I should actually go round. I do apologise, the computer sometimes does this. Here is the runway, straight ahead of me. I now need to concentrate for my final landing. Approaching one nine. Confirmation that it's runway one nine. Five hundred. Five hundred feet. Four hundred. Four hundred feet. Three hundred. Three hundred feet. Two hundred. And you said fourteen thirty two front to your right, right Bravo and monitor the ground traffic pole One hundred. Right Bravo. Seventy. Sixty. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. Long landing. Long landing. Speed reducing. Eighty knots. Sixty knots. Apply the brakes. Auto brakes go off. I can now control the last braking to the turn off of the runway. Spoilers down, engines back to idle. And turn off the runway. Welcome to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Just for you, Frank. We track the flaps as we taxi to the gate. Parking brake on. And 
engines off. Engine one off. Engine two off. Once again, welcome to Jackson Hole.